But also one of the core set of definitions that I always encourage people to look at first is definitions regarding the limitation of your enlightenment, how long it will take you to become enlightened, uh, what all is required before you can live in an empowered way. Those things that sort of draw the process out into a negative, long, suspended thing. If we get rid of those first, and one of the ways to do that is to speak like I just did, and also to investigate, when we do that first, in a sense, when we address those negative points of view, then the complexity becomes more complex, but on a higher level, and we can still investigate those ideas, but at least we'll feel empowered and free, and so it will go faster. It's simply a way to accelerate the process, not to take away the learning curve of complex, uh, complexity. And there is a greater and greater and greater complexity. So every time, in a sense, that you bump yourself up a frequency level, which is another way of saying you're happier, more embodied in your happiness, more confident in your joy, every time you do that, you step it up a notch, the frequency amps up, and as a result, because of the frequency amping up, quite literally, you can see frequency as wavelengths, right? So if you're a little slow frequency, then within two second time frame, within your, let's say a one second time frame, you experience maybe, whatever, three waves, three up and down points of information. When you've investigated that or jumped free from that, jumped into greater joy and faith and bliss and infinity, you step it up a bunch. And what happens is your frequency increases. So within the same, what other people experience as a second, you experience 10 seconds. You experience 30 data points. So you can imagine the complexity that appears every time you step it up a notch. So first of all, don't ever feel like I'm taking away complexity because I'm adding to it, but in a way that you can actually handle, in a way that you can actually be joyful about it. Complexity for me is another way of saying you become more skilled at being consciousness in a body. You become more awake. You become more efficient. You become more fluid. And definitely to attract some degree of paradox and complexity to oneself is a sure way to explore and embody that type of energy, that type of skillfulness, that type of awareness and gentleness at the same time. Definitely, definitely look at your definitions. How are you generating what you're generating? What are you believing in for sure? I think that there, for me that there's a, like a level of sensitivity mm -hmm. in awareness yes. that I want to bring personally. Um, to that process and on my own path. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to forget about that, about that part for myself. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to oversimplify it so that I lose sight of it so that I think I'm fully self-realized when mm -hmm. actually mm -hmm. I have all these little things that are still snagging me. That's so cool. And I imagine that, you know, you and I both all, like all of us will always perhaps, or maybe not have a lot of little snags. And I want to bring sensitivity to, sure. to, um, so the process of looking at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. So what, what do you feel, um, if you don't mind me asking, what do you feel you could be, how do you feel or what do you feel you could be lacking if you would, let's say, come to my meetings too often or I would talk just like this? And let's say you got absorbed in that type of energy. What do you project? How, how do you project that could somehow lack that sensitivity for you or make you forget where you're coming from or what your intention is? Do you, do you, first of all, do you really believe that could happen? Do I believe that I could lack? That you could lose what's truly valuable to you? No. Okay. So you, do you believe that the gentleness or however you wish to word that quality, which you want to, want to bring about in your actions and your work and your relationships, that quality, do you think that you can lack that? You think you can lose that? No. If you go too high or far or deep or immediate or confident? Okay. No, I just, I, um, I don't feel that. I just wanted to bring, I wanted to shine light on it because mm -hmm. it felt really alive mm -hmm. and sort of like glaringly like missing mm -hmm. from just the way you were talking today. Uh -huh. And I've heard you talk lots of times uh -huh. where you pointed to it. Mm -hmm. So Right. Okay. Well, thank you for adding to the overall spectrum <laughs> of humanity's mm -hmm. desire to experience this thing in all kinds of different ways. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Thank you. There's definitely something that I'm trying to get out here and I'm not quite getting it. Uh huh. But that's okay. And you want to get it? I kind of want to get it. Okay. What is it? It's exciting. Have you already mentioned it or have you been next to it, but not on it? Have you mentioned it? Like, have you noted it yet? And have I simply not responded in a way that's conducive? Mm -hmm. Or have you not mentioned it yet? So, um, <laughs> what are you thinking? My sense is that 
moving from I am this mm -hmm. to I am mm -hmm. is a much more rigorous process. A rigorous process uh -huh. than... It, rigorous, like in an exciting way. Rigorous, and okay. there's like so much to uncover in looking at our beliefs and our definitions. Mm -hmm. then, then I make it sound. Yeah. Then okay. it's like then it's just like you move from this and then to this, <laughs> and then you're an infinity, and woo, you did it. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. well, <laughs> I'm not meaning to be a jerk right no, now. No, no, dear one, I got like an hour and a half, two hours to explain this. You know, so that's. That's why I make it sound like that, but yeah. Totally, there is... <laughs> well, in a sense, you know, at least the glimpsing of it can be very immediate. Like glimpsing, just sort of like jumping through all these levels. I'm not saying fully embodying and integrating, but at least glimpsing these things can be done in one single guided meditation that's effective for you. So in that sense, it doesn't make sense to me to make it sound more complicated or limited than it is. And at the same time, I do agree that... Um, in everyday life, and for the average person, which is almost everyone, yes, to really like embody and really shift those identities gradually, or not gradually, but like fully, really does require some attention. It requires some sincerity, it requires some investigation, it requires some love and gentleness, it requires some processing. But the glimpsing of it does not necessarily require processing. And which can be helpful so that we can open up those gateways and then we have a greater perspective from which to actually address those things that need addressing in order for us to fully, frequency-wise, let go of those things that are unwanted, that are sort of unnecessary, and become more of the frequency that is completely conducive to being a channel to all of that that's integrated and embodied. I agree there is work to be done on that level, and there is love and gentleness to be brought to ourselves, for sure. It's about, like, um, just about being honest with ourselves. Totally, always, always. Otherwise, you don't care about your life. Totally. That honesty is really rich to me. Mm. That's beautiful. So, thank you for sharing. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Sorry if I was a jerk. You were a jerk? You were not a jerk. <laughs> Trust me, I've seen jerks. You're not one of them. I am one sometimes. You're very gentle. Thank you. And I'm sure some people got something out of that as well. So. <laughs>